Well, let me first start by saying welcome. Uh, greatly appreciate the time that you're taking this afternoon or this evening or this morning in order to learn more about an exciting project that we have within the Department of Civil Construction and Environmental Engineering. Before I get started, I thought I'd tell you a few housekeeping items. Uh, first, I want to note that this session is being recorded. Um, there is closed captioning available if you would like that. Uh, the captions pop up and you can move them around your screen as they may block part of the presentation. And we will have a Q&A at the end. And you're welcome to send questions in the chat. Uh, Alicia Carroll, who is also with us today, uh, will also be able to, she'll be taking note of the uh, questions so that we can get to them um, at the end. All right. So I'd like to just go ahead and get started. Um, as I mentioned, it's an exciting time for our department in the fact that we're looking at expanding town engineering and renovating part of town engineering. Many of you know that town engineering was constructed in 1971, and when it was constructed, it was a massive advancement for our department uh, from where we were before. And we shared town engineering with aerospace engineering. In 1999, Aerospace engineering moved into a, another building, and we were able to expand to basically encompass all of town engineering. As we look at town engineering since 1971 and since 1999, it essentially remains unchanged. And yet, many of the things that we do in terms of research and teaching have radically changed over the last 50 years. And so, this expansion and renovation is us moving our department into the next century. As you know, town engineering is in the northwest corner uh, of the university. And because we're in the northwest corner of the university, many of our students enter the building through the south portion of the building, not the part of the building that faces east towards the armory. And so because of that, as we focused on the renovation, we thought that it would be great to focus on this south entryway. So this is town engineering as it stands today. Um, and I want you to focus on that pathway that heads into that south entryway of the building. Our hope is to create a, a grand entrance into the building and create a space which focuses on collaboration. We feel that this is a key part that's missing in our existing building. And so the new building will all be about collaboration, whether it be in the classroom, in small individual breakout rooms, or in large spaces where students can gather. So here's the change. Now this graphic that you see here is just an artist rendering. We don't know exactly what the addition will look like, but I really like this addition because it, uh, the way it's been drawn is because it honors the past in terms of kind of a verticality that we have in our existing building. But you can see that the amount of glass that this new addition would have is substantially different than what we have in the existing town engineering. This will allow light and energy to come into the building and just provide a space which will attract prospective students, attract existing students to come into town engineering and be a great place for our faculty, staff and students to collaborate and meet. This is another way of looking at that expansion. Uh, you see the design uh, College of Design building on the left hand side. As you look at the addition in this picture, you can see a couple of things uh, clearly. One is that it is a two story addition that will be connected to the second floor of town engineering, the existing town engineering. And I'll be able to see that you'll be able to see that more clearly as we look at some uh, potential floor layouts for both the first and second floor. This picture also shows clearly a bump out on the east side. As I mentioned to you earlier, the east side, which is the official main entrance to the building, is not used extensively because it opens out onto Bissell Road and really isn't the direction in which either students, faculty, or staff are entering in the building. And so our idea is to create what we call a bump out uh, in this space. And currently, that space is allocated to a new student advising suite. This is our existing town engineering. We have worked hard to uh, increase the amount of color and graphics and lighting in the building. If you haven't been in the building in a long time, this area will look new to you uh, in terms of the, the new furniture and the graphics that you see on the left. 
The graphics that you see now are throughout the building and including the stairwell. If you look to the right, that's that opening or that main entrance uh, that you see. And really we have over a thousand students in our department. And this is really the only collaboration space that we have that's just open collaboration uh, for our, again, faculty, staff, and students. And so we feel that we can do much better than that. This is a rendering of what the collaboration space could look like uh, in the new expansion. You'll notice that the rendering is looking to the south. So as you look through the glass on your left-hand side, you'll see the design building uh, through, those, through that glass. But you can see the amount of, as I mentioned earlier, the amount of light that will be able to come into the expansion. As you look straight into the picture, you'll see a classroom on the lower level and a classroom on the upper level. In addition to that, there's a classroom kind of behind you to the left and above you to the left that will be key aspects of the expansion. One of the key aspects of the whole thing is our environmental engineering program. We started our environmental engineering program two years ago. We're in our third year. We already have 80 students in our program. And I've invited uh, Dr. Karu Akuma to come and speak a little bit about that. So Dr. Akuma. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sanders. So I, I'm an associate professor. I, I've been, uh, I guess, instrumental in getting the curriculum together and getting our new bachelor's program up and running. Um, what you're seeing here is, many of you might be familiar with this space, is our teaching lab, existing teaching lab in town engineering for environmental engineering. So it has, I don't remember, like six benches at most. We sometimes cram four students per bench and 24 students, maybe even a little bit more um, into this classroom. And again, some of you may remember just how crowded and how loud and very difficult to move around it was. So what we want to do with this 80 student plus program, and it is growing, um, is to give the students more, a, a bigger space that they can collaborate with, which is actually critical for our new program. Our new program is very much centered around uh, hands-on collaborative te the learning opportunities. So we start from the first year, all the way to the fourth year, there's a lot of labs, not the traditional labs where you're just given what you're supposed to do, but where it's labs where students form teams and they have to think about how to run an experiment to answer a question. And we keep challenging like them like that from, again, their first semester all the way to their last um, semester with us. So uh, next slide, please. That's the reason why, uh, I was very excited to to have the opportunity to to brainstorm about this new space, this new wet lab uh, that is going to be on the first floor of this town expansion. Um, this is going to be hopefully also see through where people can see into the into the lab. More importantly, there's going to be a lot more room for again students to work together safely. Um, Lots of safety features uh, incorporated in there, a lot brighter and a lot more uh, room to also move around, discuss. Uh, the instructor can come in and actually do hands on things with them rather than having to show them from the back of the room. So those are some of the exciting things and uh, that we're looking forward to. And I'm absolutely sure that our growing student population will very much appreciate that as well. Thank you, Dr. Akuma. One other comment about this room, as you look through the lab, again, you see the glass on the far end. Um, that's the lobby area that I had showed you previously. And then the glass that you see to the right uh, would face towards the uh, College of Design. I especially appreciate, as Dr. Akuma mentioned, just the fact that there's areas where people can present and go to the whiteboards. If you remember the previous picture that I showed you, the only audio visual that we had was a chalkboard. Uh, so we feel that we can do a lot better than that. Let me tell you a few other attributes uh, of the expansion in contrasting with what we currently have. This is town engineering 322. And this is what our mechanical electrical room. Uh, the reason the ceiling is not there or the uh, panels are taken out is so that our students can see 
uh, how the heating and cooling system works within the building. You'll see some pumps in the lower right hand corner and you see our students working in teams. So we already work in teams, but this is a classroom that kind of we may work in teams by turning ourselves around as opposed to it being a room that was really designed for team based work. This is that corner where we're storing equipment into the corner of the room. As we move forward into the expansion, what we want to have is a dedicated room that's for our mechanical and electrical systems. Hello, my name is Jenny Baker and I am a teaching professor in the Civil Construction and Environmental Engineering Department. And I'm really excited about the Town Engineering Expansion Project. And one of the things that I'm most excited about for this project or in this project is the mechanical and electrical wall displays. So we're hoping to have these, these displays in, in one of the classrooms. And we'll look at some, some drawings here. So the top there's a rendering, and then we have kind of an elevation drawing here. So this is for the mechanical um, wall display. And um, this will be a live working system. So here we have a tank of water, we have a heat pump, um, we have um, a heat exchanger or a series of heat exchangers, and we have a boiler. Um, and so really what we're looking at here is to have a live representation of kind of that heat exchange cycle. So we're gonna use this heat pump to, to condition the air, to cool the air. Well, when we're cooling air, we're pulling heat from it and we have to decide where, where you know, we have to put, send the heat somewhere, right? So where are we going to send the heat? Well, on a real project, we may be, you know, just rejecting the heat outdoors. We may be sending it to a heat sink in the earth, or maybe we are rejecting it to, to water. And in this case, we are going to um, be rejecting the heat to this tank of water. So the students will be able to, to monitor the air temperature and they'll be able to monitor the temperature of the water in that tank. And they'll be able to see that as that heat pump cools the air, the temperature of the water in the tank is going to increase. And then over here we have the, the boiler and heat exchanger so we can kind of heat the air back up and, and kind of complete that cycle. So this system will be energized and it will have real water and it will be it will be a functional working system so that really the students can see that that whole cycle of how it all works together. So they can you know, kind of start it at the beginning of class and, and you know take those measurements and then periodically throughout the class they can see check the different temperatures and kind of see how everything is working. Now the other wall display is the electrical wall display, and this is kind of my area of expertise. Um, so um, I'm super excited about this one. Now, unlike the mechanical system, the or mechanical wall display, the electrical wall display will not be energized. So it is going to be installed and connected just as though it were live, but it won't actually have power going to it. So you'll see, you know, you see the, the conduits here and then, you know, that are stubbed up above the ceiling and then conduits stubbed below the floor. And those will really be installed and will really have conductors in them. They're just not actually connected to, to live power. So here we have some distribution panels. We have a transformer. Um, we have uh, a transfer switch, some branch panels and a, a motor control center. So a variety of different types of equipment. And like I said, they'll be installed just as if they were, you know, live and working, but this way it is it is safe for the students to to come up and touch them and to look at them and and really to take the covers off. So we do, you know, of course, we look at pictures of equipment and um, we, of course, draw equipment. We even take a little tour and we go and, you know, and um, tour some real live working electrical rooms. Um, but all that we can do there is, you know, open the, the cover door. We can't actually take the whole cover off. But since this equipment will not be live, we can take the whole cover off. They can see, you know, how the conductors are landed and they can see how the different things are connected and they can look at what the inside of a transformer looks like and they can actually touch it and they can be safe. Um, but it's, but it's real live in front of them. So. I think that it will improve students learning because they'll have this, these tangible examples in front of them that they can touch and that they can see operate in the, in the mechanical systems case. And electrically, like I said, they're still seeing it connected just like it would be if it were energized, but it is safe for them to touch. So um, our hope is that it will really improve learning, but it also should, um, you know, there's a good potential that will increase interest in mechanical and electrical systems and in, in and construction engineering and buildings overall, because buildings don't work without uh, mechanical and electrical systems. I tell students that all the time, that everything needs power. <laughs> Your building's not gonna work um, without an electrical system. And so, um, like I said, students can see it, prospective students can come in and see it. And um, so it should be an, a neat recruiting tool as well. Uh, but I really do think that it will, it will help to improve um, learning quite a bit. So I'm, I'm really excited for the project. You know, that's exactly right. I mean, this part of the project, uh, if I just 
carry on a little bit more with what uh, Jenny Baker was saying is it brings in this aspect of a living learning laboratory. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we want this whole expansion to be an inviting place where students can learn by just looking at it. And this is an example of what we have in our current building. This is our primary room for our surveying and geodetics laboratory. Uh, this is where our freshmen uh, spend most of their time or a lot of their time when they come into our building. Uh, note that the not a very inviting space, uh, tile uh, marks on the floor, uh, old cabinets in the back. Um, and so again, we want to create an environment where students want to come and learn. And so this is a room that's going to be redone uh, in the expansion. This is our advising suite on the third floor. Uh, when you come into town engineering, currently the department has no formal presence on the first floor. Uh, we've tried to improve our signage so students know where to go. We've tried to point them to the third floor where the main offices are, where the advising suite is. But we feel that putting part of this on the first floor again could be really key to creating a welcoming and inviting environment. And so we want to move these in, these advising offices to the first floor. One of the funny things that happens are these benches here when I see prospective students and their parents sitting there waiting to go into the advising area. I ask them if they feel like they're be waiting to go into the principal's office on these hard wooden benches. And they all, every single time, they all nod yes, uh, that they feel like they're waiting to go into the principal's office. And so, again, the new area will be uh, places where they can relax and sit as they wait to go in and see our outstanding advisors. Well, let's get into what it might look like. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner, this is existing town engineering. Uh, one of the things I want to point out are just the large number of rooms small rooms throughout the entire building. If you look on the right hand side, that room 112 is the room that Dr. Akuma was talking about for our environmental group. Um, and But let's focus on the new part, which is on the left hand side facing south towards the design building. You can see some of the attributes that we've already talked about, the wet environmental lab there for 44 students, the collaboration space that we talked about, the main entrance into the building coming from left to right, the mechanical electrical room, team-based learning uh, room in the bottom left-hand corner, the geodetics instructional lab or surveying lab, which will be expanded and much better for our freshmen and our uh, senior technical electives, and the advising suite um, that's there in that bump out area on the east side of the building. You'll also know a large number of conference rooms where students can gather uh, in their groups and teams. A conference room within our advising suite where students can and prospective uh, students can come. And you'll also notice an area where we have improved facilities which are desperately needed uh, within town engineering. If we zoom in on that, you can see it all a little bit more clearly. The advising suite, the geodetics laboratory, team-based learning and wet lab. If we go to the second floor, as I mentioned earlier, it'll be fully integrated into the second floor. So not only does this make that space, the, cur the new space better, um, it also invigorates and brings natural light into the existing uh, second floor. What you'll see here are things that I haven't talked about yet, a large team-based classroom uh, with 64 students. This will allow us to take some of our larger classes and teach them in a team-based learning format, and also a large computer lab. Uh, we currently have uh, two computer labs within the building uh, that are used for our coursework, but both of them are undersized. Um, it's important to note that this computer lab will be available for all students outside of course time, and that all the computers will have the ability of uh, for the screens to be hooked directly into their laptop. We realize, especially at the freshman and sophomore levels, that most of the programs that students need, they can use their own computers for. But as we get into the junior and senior level classes, there are a lot of very prescriptive uh, programs uh, that our students need. And we've <clears throat> had difficulty with getting those to work on a variety of different platforms. 
And so by going into this computer lab, we'll be able to have consistent learning every time uh, an instructor or a professor uh, needs to teach those materials. You'll also see the improved facilities, collaboration spaces, a conference room, and in this plan, there's an opening to the space down below, again, to just make it a very inviting environment. One of the other features is I keep focusing on this living learning aspect of it. Um, this is the basement of town engineering. It only occupies half of the footprint of town engineering. You'll notice that the new mechanical room is also highlighted. We want to make this a space where we can take small groups of students in there to see exactly how of uh, the mechanical and electrical system works for the buildings. We'll also have exposed architecture and exposed structural members, exposed heating and cooling. We're gonna put sensors in the building so that we can monitor what's going on in the building and so that students can see and learn from not only what we teach them through PowerPoint, but through learning through the spaces that they're actually uh, in through their classes. As you look at the entire building, the additions around 20,000 gross square feet, the renovation of the existing town engineering is around 5,000 net square feet. If you look at the drawings, you can see how that's allocated between the basement floor, um, the first level and the second level with the purple being expansion and the blue being renovations. Well, uh, why are we talking about this? Well, again, we think that this is a generational opportunity for our department. We hope someday that we'll have a facility that expands off of our existing town engineering, which still has a lot of good life in it, but needs some help in terms of spaces that we need for our education moving forward. And we're asking you to become part of this effort. Uh, we are working uh, to raise $25 million uh, for this expansion, and we need an all hands on deck uh, philosophy for this expansion, and we hope that you might be willing to become a uh, part of that. Well, with that, I want to just say thank you. Uh, I am very, very proud of this program as as an alumni of this program. I'm very proud. I, I even more proud since I've come back in 2018 um, as I see the students that we have today. I'm proud when I talk to, to those of you that are hiring our students and the quality of the students that we have and the enthusiasm that you have for our students and also just the loyalty that our alumni have to both our civil construction and environmental engineering programs. Um, you continue to give back in many, many ways. And so um, we'd love to have you contribute to this project. Um, or if you want to come back and have a talk with our students or work with our student organizations or give a presentation in our classes, um, we'd love for you to do that also. So thank you so much for your time today. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, my email is sandersd at iastate.edu. Um, and so I guess I'll end with Go Cyclones. And thank you for everything. Uh, hope you have a great day.